morning, everyone. Good morning. Today's lesson comes from Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, and Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they will have one language. And this is what they began to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad, from there over the face of all of the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, his name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all of the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all of the earth. Our next reading is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had finally come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together, and they were confused, because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then when they were all amazed, and they marveled, saying to one another, Look, are we not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Others, mocking, said, They are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words. For these are not drunk, for you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall see dreams, dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall all prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved.
the Holy Gospel recorded in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning at the 8th verse. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak with my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. <laughs> believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another, another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Don't really know how those words are pronounced, so we can speak. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> he rattled off those words. I was like, praise God, he got the good times. <laughs> right on the spot. Hallelujah, he got it. <laughs> well, oh my goodness. Hmm. The gift of Pentecost. So I was thinking about this passage of scripture. I can only think about the intimacy that Jesus has with his disciples and the close connection he's had with them for the past three and a half years. <coughs> being together over meal times, being together when the disciples were watching him. And he, encounter him as he was healing, as he was casting out the demonic, as they were listening to his teaching. I thought about the questions that they might have had. You know, that's where disciples are made, is in the process of the questions. And just because you have questions doesn't mean you have enough faith. Questions simply tell you that faith is very much alive when we feel the freedom and that's really what discipleship is. It's feeling the freedom to ask your questions, but also be willing to submit yourself to the process. To the process of discipleship. To the process of becoming a disciple. They have been with Jesus, as I said, three and a half years. Jesus has told them in the 12th chapter of John that he's going to go away and they're frightened and they're afraid. This one who has loved them so much, this rabbi who's been with them so much, how can he just help them leave them? But he says there's another teacher coming. And this teacher isn't just what the one who is going to be like me on the outside, but really this teacher, the Holy Spirit, it's going to be the one who is on the inside and fills you. Now, I've taken some liberties on that scripture. But Jesus, when he describes the filling of the Holy Spirit, he talks about that intimate connection of God the Father and God the Son and his the almighty presence of the Holy Spirit. So we're abiding in him. We're taking up our residence. <laughs> We're giving him a residence of our hearts and our lives. But we are also taking up a residence in him. There's a word for that. It's fellowship. It's connection. It's an intimacy. The early church knew it as koinonia. That closeness. And it's more than just sharing a meal. It's sharing the greatest at the greatest depths, closeness and intimacy and connection. And that connection, there is no disconnect. It's only that of unity. You never hear about Jesus and the Father having a fallout. Dad, didn't I tell you? You can, you know, and you don't hear about the Holy Spirit going off in a temper or having a two. None of that. They're always, at one. They're always at one. They're enjoying each other's presence. And in that presence there's creativity and there's joy and connection because that's what joy is. It's I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to be part of you. I am too. I'm glad to be part of you. Oh, can you imagine the Holy Trinity is that of one big love language that's going on. It's one of unity. <laughs> and there's a divine alignment that is being set up. See, it's not one person's will being exerted over another person's will. It's all of them together being in one accord. It's that same one accord that Matt shared that the, where it says the disciples were all in one accord. 
I know you think you got the Honda, right? Oh, that's a groaner. We've heard that one before, right? But that unity and that connection. Now, he also read that passage about the Tower of Babel. Now listen up, because I want to share something with you. Tower of Babel had people in one accord. And there was a unity of mind among the people, but it was a disconnect from Father's mind, from God's will, from God's mind. And when God saw what was going on, that there was such a disconnect, that's the time, rightfully so, the towers start falling. Babel starts falling. And language gets gets torn apart and separated. But in the Holy Spirit, there is a unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and the hearts of the believers. And when those unite and those connect, that's when there is a new language that is poured out that can be heard among all of the languages. And it's the language, not just of tongues, but it's a language where all have a chance to experience the works and the power of God. And God is praised and God is glorified. See, before is rebellion. Rebellion, the scripture says, is as the sin of witchcraft. There was another time in the Old Testament when there was a unity among the people and the king had a unity. King Saul was at will and at one with the people and they were at one with him and they said, we're just going to march out and we're going to have worship on our own. We don't need that old prophet and priest. Samuel come along. If he's not going to be with us, we're just going to march out and we're going to have it our own way. And they lost, not only the battle, but they lost his glorious presence. When the people are in line with the king and the, the authorities, and in line with the prophet and the priest and the things of God, that's when victories are won. June 6th, 1944 was one of the a most amazing battles. It was D-Day. We remember that. All those years. Tomorrow marks another anniversary of D-Day. And it had to have an alignment as such in order that lives would be liberated across Europe. What the Lord is waiting for is He is waiting patiently for the people and the hearts and the mind of the people to be united with his and for victories to be won. Amen. But we're not going to have it. We can't say, have thine own way, Lord, while we're still singing. Remember that song? Have thine own way, Lord. And we still are actually inside singing, give me my way, Lord. How many times have churches marched out, or councils marched out in what they looked and thought was the best idea in the world, but hadn't checked to see, is the pastor in line? Is the congregation in line? Is God in line, most important? Come on. And marched out and had devastation. And folks are at each other's throats. Unity and victory happens when those are lining up. Annapolis West Point, the Army War College, Coronado Island, Bud's Training. What are all of these? What do they have in common with our Sunday school, with our preschool, with Bible study or small group? What do they have in common with our deacons training every Tuesday night? Or even perhaps our Narcotics Anonymous that meets every Saturday morning. 
What do they have in common with all of these magnificent institutions that we have in the military? It shows us how serious we must be and how deliberate in all of our efforts, including confirmation, of equipping and training and blessing and giving folks an opportunity to step out in the gifts that God has given to them and blessing them so that they have a chance to goof stuff up where they're going to be loved and go, <laughs> oh, we love you, you gave it a good shot. Man, you really did it on that one. <laughs> Are you with me? The church is a place. See, it's in those settings where people are allowed to ask their questions and share their doubts. It's that chance where we do our spiritual calisthenics. Where we have a chance to work it out, even in our, as we learn. Hey, one of the greatest tactics that the enemy loves to do he loves to work by distraction. He also likes to work in getting, pitting people against people. And we got to start recognizing when there's a little flap or a disagreement. Who really is at the heart of that? Is that person really all that bad? Let me tell you what. It's just screw tape. It's enemy. That's what I call them. Trying to get in there and working division. Oh, did you hear what? They're such a jerk. Let's get them back. Let's, let's, let's form our own little, little groups and let's start going at it. You know, Lutheran church, stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> what we do together, we must see, just as those institutions that I mentioned, are so sacred and what they accomplish and equipping and developing and, and sending forth with a mindset and, and strategy. I'm sure they do all that more. We need to recognize that every single buck that goes into that plate right there doesn't go to the pastor, the preacher's salary. It goes to making sure this process of cranking out disciples continues so that this work in the community of being a light in darkness goes on because every buck that goes in there pays the light bill. But it doesn't just pay the light bill. It's the person who takes time with the other person and hears them out and hears their brokenness and lives are, are put back together and God so infuses. Yeah, I know. I'm so sure I'm not really worried about it. Amen? Because I believe that this message is what needs to be heard. That's why when we, when we gather offering, it is one of the most sacred things. I didn't come here to shake you out. If you want, I know some great shaking out messages. But we need to understand how sacred it is. When the Lord says to us, why are you robbing me? The scripture says, the Holy Spirit, one of his names is the Spirit of Truth. Well, I may not be ready for that much truth. I may not like that. But you know what? We need to hear that much truth. And more. You know, the Spirit has a lot of truth. When God still starts working on different parts of our hearts, we need to be open to what it is that He's saying instead of staying in that place when God has bigger things and more equipping. I'll tell you what, pastors and congregations. We're going to hear it more and more. 
of fall, the fall, faults of pastors and congregations and things like that. <coughs> Why do those things happen? Folks not candles? really being that open when the Holy Spirit starts to speak to our hearts. You know, first time the Holy Spirit calls us out on some sin. We don't necessarily, you know, we, we, we feel bad about it. But then we start making justification for it. Until the more we develop a thickness to it and a thickness to the, to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's calling us out on things. What does he want to do? Oh yeah, just toward that, it's not much more. No, he wants to give you more and more of himself. But too often, we stay in that place. He is a Holy Spirit. We already talked about that. All of these things are such sacred tasks. What we are about to do in confirmation, and we've said this before, and I'll say it again. Confirmation does not equal graduation. Confirmation is where we gather together as a church. And the person being confirmed says, yes, this is the faith I choose. And, and I have committed my heart and my life to Jesus Christ. And then we as the church join together with them. And we pray that that same Holy Spirit that has filled us and filled our lives and empowered us with his gifts to be a light in this very dark world. Will so fill them with his Holy Spirit's presence. My dad came into the filling of the Holy Spirit after accepting Christ. It happened in a small group. A splinter, it, it was a small group that was operated through Father Dennis Bennett's church. And they met together in Pasadena. He knew a lot about God. He'd already been through seminary and Bible school. But when the Holy Spirit moved upon him, he began to speak in tongues. He could hardly contain himself. And that made all the difference in the world. I tell you that because my mom's experience was very different. She looked at him and said, Praise God, I just realized something. What was that, Ann? She said, I've already had this. I just didn't know what it was. See, when they laid hands on her and prayed for her, she remembered that at her confirmation, when the pastor laid his hands upon her and prayed for the Holy Spirit to fill her and give her all of her gifts for her, for her life and ministry, she said, I almost fell over backwards, she said. I didn't know what to do. See, the Holy Spirit manifests in different ways. But regardless, that whole process, however it happens, however the Spirit chooses to allow it to happen or cause it to happen, it's His doing. But the equipping, the training, the empowering, because it's that power that allowed Jesus to do what he did, and that sending forth. That's what we continue to need to be about. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this time. How precious it is to have together and be together as a family. Now, Lord, as we gather together, to celebrate with Cadence and Gabriel and Emma. 
this wonderful moment. Let your name be praised. Let your Holy Spirit fall. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear ones, we rejoice that you now desire to make public confession of your faith and assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. Brothers and sisters, in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church in the community of God's people here in this community. You have learned from his word, God's loving purpose for you and all creation. You have been nourished at this holy table and called to be witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you and this congregation to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church the faith in which we baptism, baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in God the Father? Congregation, please rise and answer and join together with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. May be seated. Let us pray for those who are affirming their baptism and for all the baptized everywhere, that they may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and death. Lord, in your mercy. That the Holy Spirit may open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, in your mercy. That they may be kept in the faith and communion of your holy church, Lord, in your mercy, yeah. that they may be sent into the world and witness to your love, Lord, in your mercy, yeah. that they may be brought to the fullness of your peace and glory, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Each of you have scriptures, and we will hear those scriptures at this time. 
What is your scripture, your life scripture? to include the parents because the parents have been a very instrumental part as well as the congregation in making sure that they've had a chance to be raised in the homes and
just an amazing intercessor, Emma. You're going to be praying for people. Holy Spirit, ignite all your gifts in, in her. So fill her. So fill her, Lord. I thank you for every single person that has had a chance to impart faith to her. Thank you, Lord, that you've been with their entire family through this process. Lord, you've been their rock and their fortress. I bless mom and dad. I bless them in Jesus' name. I bless them together as a family. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, stir up your gifts and your power. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus, come and baptize and fill. You are the baptizer and the filler of the Holy Spirit. Release Father's gift. In Jesus' name. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in cadence the gift of your precious Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving. Give her patience and suffering. Bring her to everlasting life. For Jesus, I so bless her. Jesus, baptize her and fill her with the Holy Spirit. Grant her every good gift to accomplish your purposes. That upon this earth that she may be part of the solution and never part of the problem. Jesus, uh, one of the things I sense and see for her is that he's just going to give her supernatural downloads, insights into things of him. You guys, if you see stuff or want to share anything, you're welcome. Um, supernatural insights and downloads. He's going to show you the secrets and the treasures of the secret places. If you will seek him, you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart, show Are you good with languages? Does she like languages? She does what? You do sign language. There's a, just an incredible community of the deaf that need, need to receive, need to be ministered to. I bless you. Sign language is a gift of tongues as well. Give her, give her expedience. I bless her in this, in Jesus' name. Empower him in his serving. 
give him patience and suffering, bring him to everlasting life. Lord God, you know the purposes and the plans that you have for him. Lead him and guide him as he seeks you. You are the rewarder of those who diligently seek you. I bless him in his searching. Also, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, I break off any, any, uh, any threats or attacks or things of the evil one that would try to hijack him from his purpose and the plans that you have for him. Surround him with only the best friends that are going to influence him positively. If there are people in his life that need, need to be blessed on their way, Lord, bless them on their way out. And Lord, if there are those that, that you want to release and bring into his life for divine alignment, Lord God, I pray for that as well. Stir up all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Jesus baptized her with the Holy Spirit and power. So fill him. Unite him. Lord, give him a heart for the last, the least, and the lost. Give him a supernatural passion for more of you in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Bless him now. We as a congregation bless him. In Jesus' name. again, I present to you your brothers and sisters, those who are now fully members of this congregation, and all the rights and responsibilities that go along with that, and know that you're also going to be receiving a fresh box of tithing envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> your very own. Congregation, would you warmly welcome them?